today's video we're going to review FDRV, IDRV, and HAIL. And then I'll go over the stock that I think is going to be the best electric vehicle stock over the next 10 years. Alright, so the first ETF is FDRV. This is the Fidelity Electric Vehicles and Futures Transportations ETF. What this does is they describe it as companies that engage in the production of electric and autonomous vehicles and their components, technology, or energy systems. I want you to keep in mind that this is a brand new ETF. As you can see, it has only been out since 2022, so we only have two years to go after the track record here. So definitely more risky. Now we're going to look at the fund details. We can tell it is passively managed, and we're going to do a further breakdown into the composition of what actually makes up this ETF. As you can see, total holdings, there's 50, and you have $47 million in assets. It was created in October of 2021, so it doesn't have that much of a lifelong expectancy here. Next, you have expense ratio at 0.39%. Scrolling down here, it shows your theoretical growth of $10,000. It is now worth $6,800. So we are essentially, if we are going to be buying into this fund, we are either getting a discount. So now let's take a look. These are our fund managers, Louis Bataille, Papal Gupta, Peter Matthew, and so on, so on. As you can see, the top 10 holdings here, analog devices is 4.3%, Tesla is 4.24%, NXP semiconductors is 3.71%, and then you have Rivian, which is another electric vehicle company. So for those of you that are not aware, Tesla is an electric vehicle company, Rivian is an electric vehicle company, BYD is an electric vehicle company that's in China. So you definitely have some diversification here. Now let's look at the sector diversification. It's showing that you consumer discretionary makes up 40% of this fund, where information technology is 33% of the fund. What that means is that's where the stocks are allocated in their sector that is into that ETF. Now let's scroll over to where are these companies. So United States, you're getting 60% of this fund is stocks that are in the United States. China, like BYD we just mentioned, 15%. South Korea, 8%, France, 6%. So you are getting some diversification of different countries and different companies that are within that. But just remember, this fund does not focus on nothing in energy, consumer staples, healthcare, financials, or communication services, and the list goes on down here. So you are very concentrated in information technology and consumer discretionary. All right, so now we're on the Fidelity website. As you can see, FDRV, the Fidelity Electric Vehicles and Future Transportation ETF. I want you to see this chart because I think it's important. Look at year to date. We are down all the way from $17 down to 14. So if you start dollar cost averaging, if you think this is right for you, at least you're getting a discount. One year, all the way from $21 down to $14. Let's look at the two year because we only have, we only have like a two and a half year track record here from 2021. So now you can see we started at a high of $31 and now we're 50% down at $14. So this ETF has really run, run really poorly or this is a buying opportunity. So we'll have to you know, dive deeper into this to see. All right, so top 10 holdings, we've reviewed them, but I just wanna show you because I think this is important. So the prospectus changed a little bit over the last year. You have 61 companies total. But these top 10 companies over here make up 35.35% of the company. So you better make sure that you really like these companies because they are making up a huge concentration risk in this ETF. And that's definitely something you need to think about when you're buying an ETF. Am I way too concentrated? Am I not diversified? Fidelity offers this unique feature that you can do on their website where you can bring up the chart and you can bring up the Bollinger Bands and we can look at the RSI. So really quickly, the green is the top of the Bollinger Bands, the red is the lower, and the orange is in the middle. As you can see, we are trading at the bottom of the Bollinger Bands, and we can also see that the RSI is trading at 30. So definitely, potentially oversold at this point. But you have to think about electric vehicles, and they're going to struggle in an environment right now where interest rates are so high. It's hard to sell vehicles when the interest rate on the loan is going to make it that much more expensive. But as you can see, it is trading at the bottom of the Bollinger Bands, so there is a potential bounce on this, but we can't predict that. <clears throat> 
All right, so once again, as you can see, just going over the portfolio characteristics, we went over the percentages, top 10, 35.5%. It's, you know, North America, Europe, and Asia on the right side, as you can see. But I want to show you the market capitalization here. You see it's medium-sized companies is 27%, large is 3%. That's most likely Tesla because that's pretty much Tesla and maybe BYD are the large cap. And then you have small cap. Now the next, as you can see here, sector exposure. I just want to give you another example of it. It's just these four. Materials, 5%. Industrials, 12%. Technology, 32%. And consumer discretionary, 38%. So you have to look at your other index funds and see, am I too concentrated in these areas? If you have high technology, like maybe you invest in a QQQ or something, maybe you don't need something like this because you have so much of your money already allocated to these sectors. So it's definitely something to consider. Looking at the ratings and analysis, there is nothing. There's no technical sentiment. Morningstar has not rated this ETF. Now we're going to move to performance. And let's scroll down, and you can see it shows the life of this fund so far is negative 15%. You know, I don't think this has upgrade as actually updated because if we just looked at the chart on the two year and it's down 50%. So this ETF is not doing well. Fidelity offers a great feature where you can click compare and you can comp you can compare your ETF, your index funds against other ones. We're going to review FDRV, which we did. We're going to look at IDRV in the middle and then HAIL. But let's do a quick side-by-side -side comparison of these. So this is just the basic facts and performance. As you can see, FDRV, we spoke about how the market price is $14 right now. IDRV is $30 and HAIL is $27. They are all ETFs and they're open-ended investment companies. Definitely things you want to check as you're looking into it. Next, I want to compare is just the expense ratios. They're all very similar at 0.39%, 0.47%, and 0.45%. Now, you know that I'm not going to give you ETFs that I think are useless. I'm going to go through them if I think they're actually worth you know, reading about. The concentration risk is the big one here. I want you to focus on this. FDRV, as you can see right up here, is 35.35%. That's those top 10 holdings that we reviewed that make up the ETF. Hale is what we're going to, I'm sorry, IDRV is what we're going to go into next, which you can see is 41% concentration risk. So that's something you need to keep in mind. Whereas Hale was only, you know, 17% concentration risk. So these are things you need to think about when you're going to invest in these ETFs. All right, the second ETF is IDRV, iShares Self Driving EV and Tech ETF. Let's look at this one. As you can quickly see, we went over that gross expense ratio at 0.47%. It's currently trading at $30 on the chart. Let's go to the one year. It is down from $45 down to 30, so that's a very big discount. And we're gonna click on max to see when this was created. As you can see, it goes all the way back to 2019. It's opened at $25, which they usually open at. And then it went all the way up to $60 and now down to $30. So this has been a roller coaster if you were buying a dollar cost averaging into this ETF. Very volatile. And let's look at the composition because I think that's going to give us a hint to us why it moves so much. All right, so IDRV, we're looking at the portfolio composition. The goal is that it is in one of 43 developed or emerging countries so these stocks can these companies can be invested all over the world but looking at the holdings take a look at this the holdings there's only 77 companies within it but the top 10 companies make up 41.47 percent so that's concentration um, risk right there is because these 10 companies right here neo rivian pilbara abb schneider and etc they make up 41%, almost 42% of this portfolio. So if these top 10 companies don't do well, this ETF is going to sell off. And currently, even though Tesla is 3.86%, it has just sold off 20, you know, 27% just in 2024. So that's going to have an impact on the ETF selling off. But as we can see, where is this country mostly? This is pretty much in North America, only 29%. Europe's 27%. So you're really investing in Asia big time. 42% is in Asia right here. So it's definitely something to consider. You're definitely getting almost an international exposure to this. If that's what you're looking for, that could work for your portfolio. And then market capitalization, 32%, large cap, 31%, giant, medium, 19, small is 13, micros, 4.25%. But as you can see, 
sector exposure, 56% in consumer discretionary, industrials 14%. And look at that industry exposure. We know that we're investing in electric vehicles, so we expect the automobiles to be high at 40%. Automobile, automobile components, 15%. Electrical equipment, 12%. So this is everything electric vehicles. So when it comes to IDRV, you do get a dividend. You get a 2.16% dividend. But is it consistent? That's what you got to ask yourself, which we'll go over in just a second. Gross expense ratio, 0.47%. But look at these dividends. It only paid certain times. So as you can see in Q2, it paid 43 cents. You didn't get a dividend in Q3. You got a dividend in Q4. So it's either not paying dividends or it pays only twice a year. So it's definitely something you got to look into. I believe it only pays twice a year because I'm looking at the dividends and capital gains distributions. It paid December of 20 of 2023. It paid in June and then December and then December. So definitely something to look into. I don't believe you enter these kind of ETFs for dividends. You're looking for growth. All right, so analyst ratings. We do have some ratings on this. It's a one star out of five. And on the three year, it's one star out of five. The technical sentiment is weak short-term, mid-term, and long-term. So definitely a lot of negative sentiment on this stock. We're going to look under performance and risk. Your $10,000 investment right now, if you started in 2019, you'd be up $5,000, as you can see right here. So definitely a rocky road. And overall, life of the performance isn't terrible. The life of the performance is 9%. So you made 9% if you invested on day one. So, so far, the ETF is still showing that it is positive. It's making 9%. But against your 9.41%, you're paying that a gross expense ratio of 0.47. So just things you all, you got to put in, into perspective and that concentration risk. All right, next we're going to speak about hail. But I quickly just wanted to show you this. We know that FDRV, IDRV, and hail are all ETFs. We saw the market prices. But I just want to show you the net assets, how much money is in these actual ETFs. So FDRV on the left side, you can see it's $47 million invested. IDRV has $355 million invested. And Hale has $44 million invested. So as you can see, it seems like so far, IDRV has the most money invested in this. And who's the sponsor? FDRV is Fidelity. IDRV is BlackRock. And then Hale, I've never heard of this, but it's SSGA funds and they're all passively managed. And that's how they keep the expense ratio a little bit low. All right, last but not least is hail. We're gonna speak about this, the Spider S&P Can Show Smart Mobility ETF. As you can see, this trades at $27 a share right now at a 0.45%. Let's go on the max on the chart. And as you can see, it's been out since 2017. It opened at usually $25. It looks like it opened at $30 for this one. Sold off down to $16, all the way up to $70 a share, down to $27. So this is completely sold off. So let's take a look at the composition and break it down. So when we look at Hale, it had the least amount of concentration risk. And that's what I like about it. So when you look at it, you can see the top 10 holdings are 17% of the company, of, of ETF and it makes up 83 total. So look at Hale, you can see that the top 10 investments, look at the percentages, 2%, 1%, so very balanced, I like that, 1%, 1.7%, and nothing is too overbearing in this, the only thing that is overconcentrated is OR Innovation Class A. As you can see, it's trading in North America, 77%, and Asia, 15%, which is much less than IDRV. Remember, IDRV was f like, over 40% in Asia, where the market capitalization invests primarily in 26% micro, 25% micro, medium, 21%, large, 17%. So I feel like we're getting a better balance here with Hale. So I definitely enjoy that. But it has sold off so much because if you see companies like FSR, it has sold off so much. Look at FSR. It's 1.66% of this. FSR is worth less than a dollar at this point. So you're talking very risky ETFs where they have completely sold off from $30 down to 80 cents. So I don't like seeing that in an ETF that it is holding in its main composition, a stock like Fisker that is an electric vehicle company, but 
they need to adjust the percentages because it's it's down almost 100 percent so these are things that the etfs when they're passively managed you can run into this where they're still bag holding stocks that clearly are not performing well that investors are not interested in and this is going to bring down your overall performance all right so focusing on the distribution expenses as you can see we have a 2.62 percent dividend gross expense ratio 0.45 percent but look at the ratings and analysis one star out of five on both the three year and the five year out of these funds and the sentiment is weak on the short midterm and long term and the performance has been awful so you invested ten thousand dollars in 2017 you were basically up twelve thousand dollars total so the performance has been very weak for this company and the life of this etf is only 2.59 percent if you bought it at inception so now that we have reviewed all three etfs you know, I think that there is no clear winner in this. You have to be very careful with FDRV, IDRV, because of that concentration risk. You got to look at that 35 concentration risk and 41% concentration risk. But if you look at Hale, it had 17% concentration risk, but it had the weakest performance, only 2% growth on the life of the fund. So these three funds are definitely struggling. And it's something that you really got to consider. And for me, I am going to invest in three electric vehicle companies long term, make them one, one to two percent of my portfolio in stocks that I think which are the best out of all of these. So let's go into it. Let's look at the three stocks and let's see. If all right. So now I'm going to give you my top three stocks that I'm looking to buy and make an entry in long term. So let me break them down and I'll show you why on the charts. All right, so number one is Tesla. I chose Tesla because it is the most captivating stock. It has the most public awareness. He doesn't even have to advertise. Everybody knows who Elon Musk is. And it's not just the electric vehicles, but he's trying to do the autonomous driving. If he is ever able to achieve this, this stock is might actually be worth what its PE ratio says it is. The PE ratio is so overpriced at this point that it's finally coming back to earth because it used to be at 70 or 80. Now it's at 42 because we've had such a sell-off from 260 all the way down to 183. Now, if you follow my channel, you know that I day trade Tesla all the time, but I'm going to start a long-term um, position in my taxable portfolio that I show weekly. So definitely refer to my playlist. You can always see that and see the stocks I'm holding long-term. But the reason I'm looking into it, because I like the electric vehicles, I like the full self-driving, and I like the AI robots. So if you can get that on the Tesla balance sheet, plus their energy business growing, I think we're going to see a nice uptrend in the, in the few years. And when should you buy stocks? Should you buy them when they're at their ultimate high at 400? Or should you start to look to buy them when they're starting to sell off, when they're having trouble? Tesla's struggling because of the high interest rates. It's harder to sell an electric vehicle. That's fifty, sixty, seventy thousand $70,000 when you have to pay a high interest rate on it. So for me, I wanna buy Tesla on weakness, but I'm just gonna dollar cost average in. I'm not gonna go in too heavy because as you can see, just in one year, we went from 300 all the way down to 183. So that's a nice haircut coming down. So it's definitely something to look into. But let's go into the second stock that I'm gonna show you that I'm looking into. And I think this one might surprise you. All right, so stock number two is based in Beijing, China. This is Li, Li Auto. And remember, investing in Chinese companies is very risky because some of them don't have to report to the SEC. So you don't know if, you know, what they're reporting is completely accurate. Li is something that has been competing against Neo stock, and they have been meeting their deliveries throughout the years, and they've been shown to actually be profitable so far. So I definitely like the idea of investing in Li. But it's something that I would dollar cost average in less than 1% of the portfolio. But I want to show you an overall chart. The max it used to trade at, it was at $15. And it went all the way up to about $50. And now it's down to $27. And when you, let's just say it was too, you know, too risky for you. You can look at other automobile ETFs and other ways to invest in Lee. Fidelity will show you. You have like the Smog, CCSO where you know exposure to Lee is about only four or five percent so it's definitely something to look into if you're if this is definitely too risk adverse because this is definitely more of a risky stock because it does not pay any dividends 
the sentiment is very weak mid and long term and you have to really believe in electric vehicles if you think you're going to be buying a company that specifically sells companies sells cars that are just electric vehicles but i just want to show you the statistics really quick on it it doesn't have much institutional ownership only nine percent so I, i'm assuming other means retail i'm assuming retail owns this and I'm looking at the, the balance sheet on it and it shows that the profit margin is 22%. Tesla right now, their margins are 17%. So I like that it has good margins, but they do have big debt to assets at 55%. But Lee is a company that I have day traded and I have invested in, and now I might potentially buy them long term. But it's only going to be a very small percentage of the portfolio because it's very risky and we don't know if they're going to succeed. All right, guys, last but not least is BYD. This is Boyd Gaming. Apparently, through all the news, they are directly taking over the market share in China against Tesla. So I want to be with the company that is competing against Tesla. I think Tesla is going to be the winner in the long term. But I want a company that does compete against Tesla because that's only going to, you know, competition is good between companies. And I think it's good investment long term. But you have to remember that I'm keeping these investments less than 1%. So, you know, if I own 90% S&P 500, I have less than 1% in these stocks. So I'm being very careful. Don't want to take too much risk because I know that there's a lot of risk when you're trading these companies. The sentiment is very strong long term, whether it's short term, mid term or long term. And let's see if they pay any dividends. It looks like they do pay a dividend, which is nice, almost 1% compared to the market of 3%. But we're not in this for dividends, we're in this for growth. It pays quarterly dividends um, four times a year, which is good. And let's look at the statistics really quick. Let's see what their margins are. So right now, their margins are 45%, which is excellent. But they have a huge debt to asset ratio at 72%. So there's definitely risk with these companies. And the institutional ownership is 33%, so that would make sense why the analyst sentiment is so high, because they have their own money in the game invested. All right, guys, thanks for tuning in. If you made it this long, check out my channel, Trading Simplified. Look at my playlist. I show my Fidelity crypto and taxable portfolio. I have my trading P&L gains for 2024 on here. I have the tutorial on Fidelity Active Trader Pro, long-term investments, just investing ideas that I post, trading strategies, investing for beginners, and just previous trades that I had in the past, whether it's in 2023 or 2021. So definitely feel free to check those out. Subscribe, like, comment on the channel. Always appreciate you checking these videos out.